Welcome one and welcome all. This is episode number 136 of Upstream and it is Super Bowl Sunday so we decided to push it forward a little bit. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing pretty good man. How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Can't complain. James, what's same, up with you? Same here man. I'm just rocking and rolling. Lots going on but uh, trying to hold it all together, right? <laughs> <laughs> I almost tagged you twice in this tweet, uh, Alex. Oh, boy. <laughs> I wonder if it would have given you uh, double notifications or not. That would have been interesting I to see. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what's what's crazier, Twitter or, like, BlackBerry right now heading into, into Mercury, guys. It's I haven't felt this type of hype in a while. Like, there's an actual launch event. Like, we haven't had that in a while. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's good stuff. Really, really. Yeah, and... This is like a beautiful setup for BlackBerry. Like they don't have to spend money on launching a device. They have someone else doing that. I mean, like it's, it's not like a match made in heaven so far in terms of TCL and BlackBerry. I mean, we're still kind of getting more of what that's going to look like longer term. And I think you guys are having Steve on this week. Is that a place? I thought I saw that in an article last night from Kevin. Yeah, we have um, uh, Steve coming on a podcast later on this week to be able to go ahead and you know, just add a little bit of more information and background behind all of that. So that'll be interesting to, to basically sit down and take in. Um, it's kind of bad because, I mean, I'll be on the podcast, but uh, I don't like actually listening to my own voice. But, uh, you know, it's probably one of those ones where I'll have to go back and actually listen to <laughs> the actual podcast itself, even though, even though I'll be on it. <laughs> but, yeah, it'll be nice to, uh, to be able to go ahead and get some additional details um, you know, behind uh, what is what is actually taking place, and some idea of what uh, what the launch event would uh, look like, and all that stuff. So, I'm super stoked. It seems like you guys over uh, over at Crackberry are having a little party since it's the 10 year anniversary for you guys this month. That's such a mega milestone. I kind of get why you know we were talking about BB10 being four years old, and you're like, well, you know, it's, it's not five, it's not 10, but Crackberry's turning 10, and that's kind of crazy. Right. That's kind of like what was behind it it's like it's not like five years celebration i mean obviously you know i wanted to go ahead and acknowledge it but at the same time it's not like you know it's not like a milestone celebration unfortunately but hey we get we got something up and uh you know made sure that we recognized that it was four years blackberry 10 so that was out there and uh, you did a you know awesome job on the video going through some of the devices and such so that was good uh but yeah i mean barcelona you know, the launch event is happening on the 25th, so we're going to be there. So it only kind of makes sense to be able to go ahead and have a little meetup as well to be able to go ahead and, and you know, sit, sit down with some of the people that we actually, you know, we're reading the sites on a daily basis and so on and so forth. Um, plus, I mean, we get to hand out some uh, special event tickets for the actual uh, launch for the BlackBerry Mercury to those who will be in attendance. So that'll be awesome. Definitely. Seems like we're kind of back to our old ways, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, the good old days are... I I mean, Kevin put up an article saying that the good old days of CrackBerry are back. And he's kind of right because, I mean, speaking from my own personal, personal, you know, like behind the scenes background, it's kind of like... It's kind of the exact same feeling at this point that, you know, you have some of the pieces that are that were missing for you know, pretty much the past few months back together and things are happening the way that they normally would back in the good old days. I hate to hate to really yeah. use the term, but, you know, it that's exactly what it feels like. And, you know, it's kind of funny. I'm I'm technically Kevin's boss now. <laughs> <laughs> which is rather amusing to me so it's like i wrote up this article can you check it for me i'm like yeah all right this is terrible this is terrible i'm fixing this blah blah blah, blah. all right now you can post it <laughs> <laughs> and that's what time does it kind of just inverts a lot of things right i love the analogy or kind of the explanation he gave in one of his editorials talking about like blackberry 1.0 2.0 3.0 and like right now we're seeing BlackBerry 4.0. That's a software company, and now we've got like a just a refresh on the handset side with TCL coming in and and really pushing the BlackBerry mobile brand. Now it's kind of exciting. It feels almost like 
like the Blackbird 10 launch almost that type of vibe again because we are really getting a return to form in terms of that social outreach that we're used to seeing and you know really pushing on the consumer side of things on, on what these devices are capable of. Um, I've seen some reorganization happening as well with just some of the BlackBerry salespeople, right, working together now with the TCL group and expanding that, enter, that you know, that enterprise uh, customer base as well. So it seems like they're really getting their ducks in a row to kind of knock this one out of the park. And I think this is a win BlackBerry really needs. Uh, maybe we can convince Alex back over to the fray at some point, you know. <laughs> if they keep killing it, though, if they keep crushing it out there, right, and they keep putting these new handsets out, we get, you know, reiterations on DTEK60 and, you know, get all touch and get some really competitive form factors like the Mercury. There's going to be a lot of good stuff out there. So I'm, I'm personally pumped and you know, it's always cool to be able to make those maybe like non-believers or people who have looked away and looked back again. And Alex is a good example of that, right? He's always going to have his ear to the ground for this BlackBerry stuff. And there may be something in the future that entices him. What do you think, Alex? Are you hyped February at least a little bit more than you normally are, especially with CrackBerry got, you know, doing so much and having so much going on for the month? Yeah, I mean, obviously CrackBerry and BlackBerry are working together in some regard. So it sounds like, you know, it's exciting any type of hype around BlackBerry is cool because it's really been so long since that's really been a thing. So I'm excited, and um, I think regardless of what I do personally, it, and that shouldn't matter too much really, a lot of my family members and friends, they're still on BlackBerry, and you know a lot of them do want to continue using it. So I need to keep my you know eye out for what's coming out to make recommendations for them because you know they still want that physical keyboard. So what device do they get next? They're on a passport. They're on a priv. What do they do next? So um, it, it's fun to kind of see this reinvigoration, um, and I, I'm excited for it. it. It's fun. Yeah. It just seems like a, a very, very interesting kind of turn of events. We're seeing even more like on the developer side of BlackBerry, like as a software company, you know, developers is something you, you have to think about, right? And in the BB10 days, developers was like a really, really big thing, but those summits are still happening around the globe. And there's one happening in Europe, in London, over in March. So I think that stuff is really, really important to kind of stay tuned to as well, because BlackBerry on the enterprise front and on the software and mobility segment is really growing as well and bringing new people in. Uh, definitely looking forward to some of the things that BlackBerry has coming forward. Blaze, you got to get confirmation for me as to whether the Mercury has on-screen or capacitive navigation buttons. <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's it's a question we know the answer to in terms of the capacitive buttons, but I'd love to get that like locked down mentally before the device launches so that I can, you know, get ready for it. I don't know. I, I'm still, that's like the one little qualm I have about this device so far and like how that's all going to work. But, you know, I'm sure when you guys do your hands-on and whatnot, we're going to be able to see in more detail what that looks like. So... Definitely awesome stuff headed around here. Like Kevin said, maybe maybe we can t twist Steve's arms and give us a little bit more of a heads up on what's coming with the actual device itself on the podcast. So, you know, that'll be that'll be something to look forward to. I'm just glad there's people like caring about BlackBerry hardware, like not from a user perspective, because, of course, users have been about it for quite some time and will remain to be in the future, right? But someone's actually out there like, all right, well, how do we get this device out there, get it in people's hands, start selling that story and telling people, you know, what the new age of these devices is going to be like. Definitely it left, I feel like there was a gap missing and it's kind of been refilled with, with the, you know, BlackBerry's partnership and expanding on it more. So still waiting on what we're going to see over in India and, in you know, in Indonesia and really what all that kind of looks like. Especially because we saw, I think, a week week or two ago, those specs of an Indonesian device and kind of how all of that starts looking as like a global portfolio of devices for BlackBerry. I don't, I don't know. Can you guys make a comparison here between any other hardware turned software company really doing something similar than what BlackBerry is doing? I mean, you can't really compare them to what HTC and Google are doing with the Pixel. You can't really compare it to what. They're doing over in Cupertino with Apple and Foxconn. It's kind of like its own thing in the market. I think Microsoft may be kind of close with kind of what they're doing with Windows 10 Mobile. But it's just a really unique and interesting strategy. And one I feel only really would have worked for BlackBerry in this type of situation. What are some of you guys' thoughts on kind of the trajectory of how, you know, the fork in the road is splitting between BlackBerry having that hardware focus and, you know, of course, uh, having the software one as well? I don't know. And like you said, it is um, it's a unique situation that they've sort of put themselves into. And I think uh, I think John Chen remarked about that on a few occasions that they were 
before before all of this was actually you know settled in in the capacity in which it is now he was he was basically putting it out there that he was going to be able to go ahead and create a unique situation for blackberry um and you know at the time people kind of questioned well what what can you possibly do that is unique and that somebody hasn't already tried right um and i don't know i mean obviously it does it does take uh, you know some of the same vein that HTC has done with it, even the Pixel. Um, it, it's along the same lines, but it's not the exact same lines. And I think I think the way that John Chen has uh, has put it together has created a, a a good atmosphere for everybody involved. I guess you could say, um, not only not only you know BlackBerry the company, but TCL and BlackBerry Mobile. Um, there's a lot of room there that that can be played with to be able to go ahead and, like I said, make it make it beneficial all around and have it be a nice turnaround story of its own that that sort of segmented itself and went down a totally different path from everybody else. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the trajectory that they they've been on right now. I mean, obviously, we still have a ways to go to see how everything pans out, but. You know, with BlackBerry working in the software side of the things, um, and these other organizations such as BlackBerry Mobile being able to go ahead and take control of the hardware situation, I mean, it, it's looking it's looking pretty good. I mean, the the only other inter- the thing that I'm I'm kind of curious about is like, okay, we know that the BlackBerry Mercury is coming. We know that BlackBerry is working on software. We know how their software process works, basically. You know, BlackBerry builds the OS, they ship it to TCL and with it signed and everything like that so that everything is nice and secure. But what comes after the Mercury? What what line of devices come after the Mercury? Is it going to be, um, you know, like, is the next device going to be an all-touch lab? Is it going to be another QWERTY keyboard? I mean, we know that, you know, QWERTY keyboards aren't going away. TCL... And BlackBerry Mobile aren't putting those aside, but I just want to know what, like, what, what comes next? Like, is there going to be a specific rollout pattern that people can expect? It kind of goes back to what what Scott was saying um, on one of the previous podcasts about like having having a defined lineup that people know and, and can expect. Like, okay, I know that you know. Two years down the road, I'm gonna get like a Priv two or whatever. Just as an example, I'm not saying that's gonna happen. <laughs> Just to be clear, I don't want people emailing me. Where's my Priv two? Um, but you know, basically that they they have something that they can expect, like that that lineup that they know is eventually gonna be pushed out to market. And I kind of hope I kind of hope that that happens here. I hope that they they set a, a, a ground base of expectations so that people know like. Okay, when my Mercury is old and I need a new device, I can get another device that is similar to it if they like that form factor and whatever. So I think I think that's um, that's something that needs to sort of be clarified. And I don't know if we'll get that clarification anytime soon, but I mean, we we may have to wait until the next device rolls out to be able to go ahead and see what path they're going to take. But I, I kind of hope that that, that is... A, is something that they're considering like giving people upgrade paths within the actual company itself like that that only makes sense to me and uh, i don't know we'll we'll see how it how it rolls out no i think it makes a lot of sense you got to get some type of portfolio of devices together that seems to be critical right and if 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 the past is any sign of the future right we have a lower end all touch dtech 50 high-end DTEK 60, Mercury, the flagship QWERTY device, looking, you know, right aside the DTEK 60, and then maybe a, a smaller, lower-powered, lower spec type of device on the low-end QWERTY side to kind of create a portfolio for That immediately seems to make the most sense kind of across this next coming year. But again, anticipation of that is something that's it's tricky, right? Do you want to tell people something they may be more interested in is coming, or do you kind of want to let it be device by device and, and give a general yeah. sense Especially as they build out kind of the initial rollout with this new BlackBerry Mobile brand, I think they have a lot of wiggle room to to mix things up. Similar to how you know BlackBerry did the first year with Z10, Q10, Q5, Z30, right, where there was kind of two and two, 
seems like we're kind of getting a repeat of that structure with what we're seeing D Tech fifty sixty and and so on. But yeah, Blaze Blaze and you know Scott from a past uh, podcast are are right on the nose. I think with you know there needs to be some type of upgrade path. You know when when my Mercury gets old, I want to go to Jupiter or you know <laughs> or to Pluto or whatever else is out <laughs> there in the solar system. Is that is that like a bad Samsung Galaxy reference, so to speak, like in a, in a backhanded way? I don't know. Either way. <laughs> It's definitely some exciting times at BlackBerry, even more so at CrackBerry. I mean, I love seeing those posts go across the wire and just getting excited about it, right? Like someone's out there really, really amped about what BlackBerry is doing, and it's definitely trickling over to me in the community. And even Alex, right? He, he may not like us too much these days, but I swear, he, he's good people. <laughs> I just like reading somebody else's post for once. <laughs> right. Like I don't have to read my own posts over and over and over. I like reading Kevin's posts. Especially because he can get away with saying things like the DTEC branding is shitty. Like he actually said that in the post. Like I can't get away with that. People would people would have a conniption if I said that. <laughs> but he can get away yeah. with that stuff. So <laughs> yeah. And it's it's what we're all it's what we all know, it's what we all think, right? So it's good that someone's out there, you know, again, championing the tr- the real matter of how we feel on these these different topics. Definitely, guys, I'm I'm looking forward to what's to come. We're still really early into February, so we don't know what kind of stuff they're going to buffer ahead of this launch either on the software side of the story, right? We've seen some beta stuff rolling around in terms of app updates. Stick a dark cub kind of floating out there. When's that going to drop officially publicly for everyone? And even BBM, I heard they've been talking about an update with some new features as well. So really, really an exciting time, I think, at BlackBerry. Alex, let's cut it off here. Again, those of you who want more BlackBerry content like this, keep it locked on CrackBerry. A lot of new stuff coming, including other podcasts, as Blaze mentioned earlier in this one. So, Alex, let's cut it off, and let's jump into just a quick little uh, debrief on the after show. Great. So for anyone who's into sports, have fun watching the Super Bowl. Uh, Be safe and have fun. See you guys next week. Take care, everyone. Later. Later.